Hello and welcome forward to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today we are revisiting the this bag. Um, as you can see I have attempted to paint on this before and you can find that video in the Acrylic Pour NZ playlist on my website. Um, but what happened was underneath these bits where the colours are great there was a printing by the company whose um, thing it was and the bits where the words are kind of showing through as you can see there where the paint has just been sucked straight into the um, stuff into the into the fabric uh, that it just is exactly what happened it just sponged it up and you can see where the outline of the printing was as to where my paint disappeared and where it stayed and sat on top of the printing so I am going to do a experiment I had a number of you comment um, on that video that I did and let me know that you have painted on this stuff before but you did put a couple of coats of gesso on first so I hadn't even thought about the fact that that might do that so I've just put a bit of metal in there just to keep the two layers from um, attaching to each other and I've got my gesso it's uh, fast gesso I'm not sure if it's available anywhere else but it's quite a um, a standard one here in New Zealand and I've got my little foam brush which I use to apply my um, my gesso gesso is really cool you can water it down and to make sure that you get a nice smooth coverage um, I'm leaving it as it's normal thick stuff uh, why am I leaving it thick because I don't want to have to do multiple layers I'm a bit lazy when it comes to my prep work to be honest which is why I use pre gesso canvases and don't gesso my records they work perfectly well the way they are and, and I have so many of these bags I don't see why I shouldn't paint on them and use them as an advert as I'm walking through the supermarket or through town or wherever I am may as well promote myself right especially since the bags were free and gesso doesn't tend to be that expensive and you get a lot of painting out of it so I'm going to do pretty much the whole of this side and as you can see I'm doing it in black the reason for that is the bag is black the gesso is black and if I don't get paint over all of the gessoed area, it's not going to stand out like a sore thumb. It's just going to look like the black bag. Alright, so I'm going to leave that to dry. Gesso doesn't take long to dry. Um, let's see, does it actually say? Seals absorbent surfaces to prevent uneven appearance. And excessively fast drying resulting from paint penetration in undiluted form gesso may be textured but dilute with a little water if sealing only is required um, clean up with so warm soapy water so it doesn't actually say how long it takes to dry but I'm going to put that aside and I will come back to it very for you very shortly <laughs> and when I come back to it I'll tell you how long it's been Hey, so welcome forward and um, our gesso has dried so I was like what can I do just to, for a play just to see if this works and I had someone comment on a video that I did um, 300 videos ago and <laughs> it, it, it made me giggle because she started telling me about how somebody else had done um, done something different to what I'd done and it was actually my second beer bomb and I don't know if any of you are aware but back in the 160s 150s of my videos 
I invented the beer bomb. Um, what a beer bomb is, is a where you drop a shot of something else into your beer, um, whether it's um, a whiskey or something, so that you get like a boof at the bottom. Anyway, so what I did was I dropped a shot of colour into a cup of paint. And over the years, year or so, however long that's been, people have manipulated it, changed it. We've all added and contrib contributed to creating something greater, which I absolutely love. I think that is the coolest thing that we can all be that contribution to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to revisit that beer bomb technique. Just put a little bit of white in the bottom of the cup there. Um, I think I used this one for a pour, trying to do that angel um, kind of pour. So I'm just going to put a little bit of crimson got some silicon in it a little bit of oh rather thick uh, viridian hue that one is this one is iridescent medium and some turquoise this the turquoise and the iridescent medium don't have silicon in them the green and the red do The green and the turquoise are quite thick. A little aeroplane, and just so that I can finish this pot off, I'm just going to scrape the rest of that out. Just add a little bit more red into there. Okay. So let me bring that up nice and close so you can see. We've got only probably a third of the shot glass has got colour in it. And then around it, we've got um, the white. Now, the cool thing is, there's actually quite a bit of cup up here. So when I... Oh, okay, so do I flip it or do I pour it? Flip, pour, flip, pour, flip. Flip slider. So when I flip it, it's going to actually, like, drain, tip, flip, blob, do all sorts of weird stuff in that process of getting from halfway down the cup to so let's see what happens ready set go so I've got quite a bit of the color splashed out this side I'm not seeing any color splashed out that side and I'm just gonna let it drain for a bit now the white's going to be draining down the sides but the color's going to be dripping throughout in through the middle so that's going to be interesting to see what happens on here um just let it drain for a few more seconds while i put the lids back on my paint how many of you have had a whole heap of fun painting and then come back the next morning and realized you forgot to put the lids back on your paint me, I've done that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I suppose if I didn't, if I had to clean up to be able to put dinner out on that same table, it wouldn't happen. But when you got a space like mine, you just like turn the light off and walk out. Sometimes my husband comes home and goes, "You didn't turn the light off." And I was like, "Well, it was daytime when I left. It didn't. I couldn't tell." <laughs> All right, let's see what's going to happen. I'm just going to smush it out the sides. And then do that. Ooh, cup looks cool. You see all those cells running down the side of the cup? That's cool. I'm just going to put that on some plastic to leave that to drain while we play. 
but that looks super cool look at that guys yummy <sighs> this is reminiscent of beer bomb this is this is the soft delicate the smushy smeared white in color um i like it and it doesn't seem to be absorbing straight into the material which is cool now i've got gesso sort of here to here so i'm going to try and stay in that as i tilt should i hmm. I'm not even tilting, I'm just bending the metal that's underneath. And straightening the material, because the material is a little bit... Now, a splash of colour like this on a bag is actually more eye-catching than a perfect shape. So I'm actually not going to try and make it perfect. <laughs> Me, perfect. Grants, anything that's perfect, not going to happen. I do want to get rid of that little bit of a dent there. And let's touch. Oh, we've got some yummy cells happening. Some of you are going to go, no, the cells have ruined it. Wait till it's dry before you judge, please. And hey, if you don't like the cells, don't put any silicon in. But it is really important that you do um, torch your paint just to make sure it um, doesn't have holes in it. My son was doing some <clears throat> cornflower cleaning for me yesterday. And a couple of them had so many air holes in them that I'm actually going to have to wash clean them which is fine because they're not on records but um yeah especially if you're doing it on something that's a permeable surface like or sorry a non-permeable surface or where the water can get underneath if you use water and soap to clean the silicon off um really make sure you get those air bubbles out otherwise your cornflower is just gonna soak in to the holes and it's really hard to get out I am liking this. I'm going to have to weigh, weigh that down though. That corner keeps rising up and the paint runs back. And it's not heavy enough. Um, what do I have that I can just weigh that down? There. Yeah. I like it. Let me get you down and show you some of the bits that I really like. Because those cells, even though I haven't tilted it since I um, since I spread it, since I torched it, sorry, those cells have grown. Look at them. They are cool. Maybe I have to do a few more bear bombs because that is awesome. I like it. I'm gonna get you down. Okay. Let's start over here. Sorry, Rick, there's not gonna be any cabochons today. How 
look at that. Hee, <laughs> they're so cool. So you can see where the cloth is bent slightly there. There's like a little ridge. Um, it's one of the cool things um, about stretch canvases. You don't get that ridge thing happening. That is pretty. Oh my god. Woohoo. Oh. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Wow. I like it. How does it get any better than this? Oh, we've got a little bit going through to the material just in there. And that can happen when the silicon hits the canvas first and then it rises up leaving a hole all the way to the canvas look at this little oh so pretty oh i do like this color combo too all right i am going to leave it there let it dry and come back to you and show you the dry result in three two one all right i lied Rick, I love you so much that I looked underneath the cup and guess what I found? <laughs> I found this. Now, let's see how far I can zoom in. It looks to me like a bit of a bozoid owl. <laughs> what do you see in there? Because that one to me is screaming out pick me pick me and i'm trying to find my blue tack i have i'm gonna pop a pop it on a round one and i'm gonna need to just move some of that white there so that it joins up so that we get full coverage on our round one and I cannot find my blue tack stick. So let me make a new one. So what's a blue tack stick? Some of you are asking. Blue tack is poster putty. Um, you know that stuff you stick your posters up on your um, on your wall with. And it come, looks a bit like this. And what I do is I make a little ball of it and stick it on the end of a stick. Stick it on a stick. Stick it on a stick. Sorry, we're so zoomed up. Every time I move, I go out of frame. And what that does, it then creates a self-adhesive holder for my cabochon just give that cabochon a little bit of a polish make sure it's nice and clean on the flat side and then we just dip it oh we're nice and focused yep dip it in and see if <laughs> he's a little bit more smushed than he was but He's cool. <laughs> My little owl. Like a cartoon owl dude. I like it. What happens if we turn it upside down? Hmm. Still pretty. But definitely better that way. I think. Oh, look, he's got a sparkle in his eye. Hee <laughs> Alright. What else is in here? While I'm... While I'm here, I may as well look. Um, give it a little bit of a warming. Oh, look at those cells. All 
All right, I'm going to go for a long skinny one. I really like those long skinny ones, if you noticed. I can't find them. Where are they? There they are. Hmm. A long skinny, actually a long skinny one would lose some of the effect. I'm going to go for a regular rectangle. Okay, so same deal. Put the blue tack on the rounded side. Clean up the shiny side. And we're ready to dip. Now I've been asked, how hard do you press? You only actually need to press just enough. Oh, that's simple and elegant. I like that. Um, you only have to press it just enough to touch the paint. But sometimes you'll see me push quite a bit because the paint doesn't cover the entire area of the glass. And so we need to kind of push down into the paint to move the paint so that it covers the whole thing. Look at that. It's so simple and elegant. Anybody else? Anything else? Got a visitor coming really shortly. Alright, so this bit over here has got quite a bit of colour in it. Let's just see what we can do. Mirror torch. Oh. <laughs> oh, God, gotta love it when that happens. What shape do we put into that? Sometimes a certain shape will, will suit it, but it's not big enough to capture. I'm going to go with the round, and I'm going to go in there. Nice and subtle and gentle again. Oh, that brought up some cool cells. Yes, no, yes. Yes, it's lighter. Which one? What shape? What size? What colour? What else have I got? Square, rectangle, round, oval, 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 oval. Dig through my big piles of colour of cabochons. Now, if you want to find out where I buy these cabochons. Please check the link in the description um, if you want to know more about doing cabochons and how I make them into pendants, etc. Rub, 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 rub. There's also a video link in the description so you can check that out. Kind of a bit wiggly, but it's still cool. All right, I'm going to leave it at that, guys. I'll be back um, 
very soon your time with the dried results see you soon okay it has finally dried oh my goodness this patch over here has got fingerprints in it because i kept it, trying to check it i honestly this guys this has been nearly a week drying i don't know what i did different but it has definitely i mean it's cold it's got cold here in new zealand um we're not having the warmth and humidity and blah 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 but it, I ended up having to, once it got to a point, certain point, actually pull it because it stuck itself to here. Um, I actually had to unstick it and lift it up to get the airflow in underneath. And uh, that was a bit frustrating. It's taken a long time for this to dry. But, 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 dun, 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 it worked. So, gessoing. Okay, let me show you. Let's see if we can capture this on screen. Can you see where it's matte black here and it's got that slightly shiny look here? So that's the gesso, that's the material. Um, so I gave myself quite a bit of spare room. Um, and it's, it's dry, yay! But it has, in very few places, has its absorbed in maybe a second coat of gesso would have completely eliminated that um but i'm pleased it's a much bigger difference than this this was the no gesso no backing no gesso on the words and just went <coughs> whereas with gesso so there you go a sales pitch for gesso it works mate it works. Um, right, so cabochons. Let's have a look at the cabochons. We've got the big oval. These are subtle and gentle with a spice of colour. None of them really jump out at me as anything. Doop, doop, be doo. But they're subtle, they're gentle, they're elegant. Like that one is super elegant. I like that one. Again, subtle, gentle, elegant. With a pop of colour on the side. And my lovely little owl, look at him, he's so cute. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> He's he makes me giggle. So there we go. Ta da! That's what we created in this video, guys. I had fun. Um, you know, this has got some iridescent in it. Um. You know, I've still got room down here to to write in mickeyart.co.nz or something to wear it around town. Not that I go walking around town much, but hey, what else is possible? How much more fun can I have? All right, I have had fun. If you've had fun and would like to know when I'm going live on YouTube um, and come join me and tell me what to do. <laughs> Sign up on mickeyart.co.nz forward slash sign up and that will get you an email 24 hours before I go live. If you are having fun with acrylic pouring and want to come and share it, want to ask some questions, you know, be part of a group of people that love acrylic pouring and are having fun with it and are willing to be a contribution with kindness. Um, come join us on Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group. The, um, you know, the two the two major rules on that group, well, there's three major rules. One, it's acrylic pouring. It's not pencil drawing or anything else. Two, no promotion, no sales pitches. Don't try and sell your work there. Don't try and sell your products there. It's not uh, okay. And three, have fun 
in a way that's fun for others. If it's fun for you to be mean, obnoxious and unkind, don't come to this group. You will get kicked out. Fun for all, please. Keep it fun, keep it happy and come join us at Acrylic Boring for Fun Facebook group. I adore you. Bye-bye.